You see people at their worst and, yep. you know, I, I'm sure a lot of times you just want to wring their neck and go, how did you not see this coming? <laughs> I say that in almost every case. Did you push record? Thanks for joining us today on Second Act TV. I'm so happy that Jonathan Noble is staying over for another segment talking love and relationships after 50. Jonathan, thank you for joining me again. <laughs> but Silka, you didn't say anything about this staying over. I give and give and give to you. <laughs> My pleasure, actually. Well, Jonathan is a divorce and family law attorney. In case you haven't seen him yet on this channel, we will link to our previous segments. Jonathan, what I want to talk about today is uh, you, and you did this on your channel, incidentally. Jonathan is also a YouTube creator. We'll link to his channel. Uh, but you had a series on there on red flags of dating and relationships. Like if you see this, don't just get out. Don't, don't go down that road. You actually told me that you have early red flags, middle and late in the relationship. But today we're going to talk about early red flags. If you see this dating, just, just stop, get out. Right. You know, I do have, these are, we're going to talk about early red flags, at least through the divorce lawyer's lens and someone who was out there dating until uh, mid 2019. So uh, I, these things were clear as day. The first one is if I would ever get a whiff of dishonesty. More often than not, in this realm of a whiff of dishonesty, people wouldn't give me their true age for some reason. I'm like, really? Really? Like, we're going to start off on this foot where you say one thing and then I ask you, and then I ask you, uh, what's your birthday? You know, the year and the month. You don't have to give me the day. Uh, and they can't answer me. So, it's like, come on, you're going to start off lying about your age. You're going to lie about uh, other, other women didn't tell me they were really married until I met them. Hmm. Jonathan, I'm one signature away from a divorce decree. Yeah, right. And uh, I got a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn, too. I mean, it's just not true. You might be, but if you are, then you're not really ready to date yet. Why don't you decompress and go work on yourself? So a lot of married people. I want to add one thing about the age, because especially if you're new to dating, online dating, it, that is kind of tough at, at over 50 because you are slotted in a certain category. And then, you know, this preconceived notion that you don't want somebody over 50, especially men looking for younger women, uh, I think that's why some people lie. I, I, I'm not condoning it. I, I don't say you should. But if you right. if you do slot yourself younger so you won't get overlooked, you definitely come out right away and go, look, I'm really this old. You know, I, I just, I wanted to come up and search. I, I never did that. I know a few people who did or they had it written down or, or at least disclosed it right away. That at least shows that, you know, you can be honest. Do, I mean, do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I think it's fine. And I did uh, notice that when I was doing the uh, swiping thing, that some woman wrote in their profile, multiple women wrote, I'm actually five years older than my stated age, but I did this for the algorithm, or right. I did this so I wouldn't miss out, but I'm letting you know up front. That's all right. Yeah, I, mean, I think so too. I really think that's fine. That's not dishonest. That's honest. You're being honest and you're telling me, and hats off to them because they look 10 years younger than even the age they said they were. But there's a reason why they're doing it and they're right up front. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's fine. So you know what a lot of women asked me and I had to figure out how to answer this. Well, on a first meeting, they'd say, is there anyone else in the picture? Right? So what are you asking somebody? Like, are you married or are you dating? No, are you dating anyone else? Like, so I would say, no, I'm waiting my whole life for you. And <laughs> so if you say something like that, what kind of, what, why does it matter? They should just be the best versions of themselves. And if you guys connect, great. Why are some women, some women in this demographic so worried about if there's anyone else in the picture? Yeah. As long as you're not married, you know, in a committed relationship. Yeah. You're almost setting, you're, you're almost setting yourself up for a dishonest answer because how do you answer something like that? Like if somebody well, would ask me, I mean, I would be, uh, yeah, of course I'm dating. I mean, we're on a dating side. Yeah, I'm seeing other people. 
Yeah, I would say either the first thing I said was, no, I've been waiting my whole life for you, or uh, no, I can't get another date. Don't you want a guy that can't date anyone else? Like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm, you're my last resort. That is really uh, And funny. they got the point. That's you know, really it's a stupid thing that some people ask. Like, of course they are. What does that show? Insecurity? I think so. I think, uh, or they're self-sabotaging. Mm. Like, oh my God, he's dating someone else. I could never stand up to his standards. So this isn't going anywhere. Or no, he's dating, not dating anyone else. And I don't want him either. So it's just like, that's a turnoff. And that's a kind of a red flag. Don't ask somebody that. If they were committed to someone else, they shouldn't be with you anyway. Right. And exactly. so you meet somebody and this didn't happen to me often at all. You meet somebody and they don't look like their photos. Uh, I went to other friends in our demographic and asked them like, what else? Uh, early red flags. And some people were like 30, 40 pounds heavier than their 10 year old pictures. So that's not fair. Oh, who's ever watching this? And I think uh, Robert Manny also was on your channel. I gave some sage advice, you know, get some full body pictures and be honest about it. You know, don't, uh, I'm not saying anything new, uh, but the way the apps are set up and the way the technology is, it's ripe for uh, a dishonest photo or dishonest, uh, you know, it's not fair and it's not going to get you anywhere. So, okay. Number two is big. I don't know why, but, uh, shit testing. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube, or not, okay. but, uh, or whatever, whatever medium you're going to put this on, but you can't imagine the number of women who demand dinner for a first date. I don't, I don't do drinks. I don't do coffee. I don't go to the park. You're dreaming. If you think you, it just sends a clear signal uh, to me and guys in my demographic, go be somebody else's problem. Like if you have to have dinner at this place or you have to have dinner at all on a first meetup, you know, it's all about just seeing if there's any chemistry and if things could really work well uh, or there's potential to, but you got to be kidding. I've even had women demand, well, it's okay. I'll pay for dinner. You know, I'm like, no, it's just a time suck. Uh, it's not about the money. It's about the best use of my time based on this, you know, crazy uh, system right. that we have. Right. So exactly. uh, demand a demand that we uh, do not meet in a mutually convenient location or venue. Uh, you know, I've dated women. I live in the Philadelphia area and I've had dated women in New York City. Uh, and I enjoy taking the train there and they would take the train to me and vice versa. But on a first meetup, like if they insisted that I went all the way there to meet them, no way. It just doesn't show any effort. Whereas if I'm dating someone that like I have maybe a 60 or 70 mile radius, if it's easy to get there. Uh, if you're if you insist that we meet at the coffee shop on the corner where you live, no way. No way. I'll definitely meet you halfway mm -hmm. or maybe even a little bit further if it makes sense. But there's a lot of people that are so burnt out and so crusty, like, oh, come meet me uh, at my corner coffee shop on, uh, you know, Broadway and 81st Street. Forget it. You know, it's not going to happen. A any sense of ungratefulness or un entitlement. Red flag. You don't want. I'm a divorce lawyer. I see this all day, every day, you know. And I'm going to date that. There's no way, no high value guy is going to do that uh, for very long. So I'm putting it out there as a red flag. Yeah, I totally. Endless agree. texting before you meet. Ah, no way. There's just no way. Two or three texts, max telephone call, and boom. I can tell you from my own personal experience, some of the most playful, beautiful women uh, have invited me to their home. Uh, sight unseen, although we did have a phone conversation or two, they were not like afraid of, they're like, look, I already looked you up. I Googled you. So if you're not willing to tell someone your real name and where you live, if they ask, you're putting yourself at a competitive disadvantage. I don't blame people for not wanting to meet you. Uh, if you're not at least willing to give your name, what are you so afraid of? Okay. Right. Are you talking to the men now or the women? Or I'm both? talking to the men. Now, the women should be careful and use their best judgment. Mm -hmm. But if someone has invited you, if you're a guy, uh, to their uh, place for dinner, uh, obviously they've vetted you. 
carefully or there'll be someone else there. So they shouldn't be afraid. Everybody should be comfortable. Uh, any place they feel safe and comfortable is the best place Yeah, because uh, you just want them to be themselves. Yeah. So. Well, I, I do want to add that I, from a woman's perspective, like Paul and I, my boyfriend, we, uh, we were 60 miles apart. And on our first date, you know, he just right away offered, no, don't worry. I'm in, you know, I'm in Orange County a lot. I'll meet you there. You, you know, it's, it's no problem at all. He made me feel real comfortable about that because I would have met him halfway. But I really, that was already, a, you know, a check in the right column for him. So I do. Right. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't demand get, it. <laughs> well, no, he if he's there anyway. So if I'm in a city or near a city anyway, of course, I'm going to meet you near where you live. All right, so this is just me, but I know a lot of guys in my group and demographic think this too. Uh, if someone's overly concerned about their appearance and they're wearing designer everything and dripping in jewels, uh, sends a bad signal to me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I'm right or wrong. It doesn't mean my tastes are right or wrong. It's just, wow, this is a high maintenance individual and I'm a low maintenance kind of want to be with a low maintenance person on many levels, uh, very stressful career. Uh, I don't want to come home and deal with uh, a lot of drama, a lot of maintenance. So I've always found success with women who take great care of themselves uh, and don't need a lot of maintenance to do that. That's just me. So that's, that's it. I, I, um, I think that's potentially a red flag. I think that goes for the guys too. If you know, if they're overly, uh, not well, not wearing makeup, <laughs> but you know, I I never cared to, uh, to meet up with somebody in a suit and tie. I, that's just not me. If you're coming right from work, for me, it would have been at least loosen the tie. That says something. Right. Yeah. I'll be going to the next one. I am my, one of my kryptonites is drama. All right. If you're all about drama and I'm unlucky and life isn't fair and my sister has this and my brother. Red flag, stop right there, time out, you're not for me. Yeah. Uh, it's a bright line. I'm not do I'm not digging drama. All right. I get enough drama at my work. And I love that kind of drama. And I love to try to sort people's lives and send them on a better trajectory. But if you're coming home to drama or you never pick the right restaurant or you never pick the right this or that, or yeah. No, no way. No way. And if you hear this in Silka's audience and you see yourself. Make a change, okay? Next bright red flag, early bright red flag. If somebody's talking in an unbecoming way about their ex, about really anybody, uh, and I love good debate and good conversation, and I love people with a different point of view, but if they're bad-mouthing someone, an ex, or someone else in their life in an unbecoming way, it's just a matter of time before you're at the end of that. Yep. Don't deal with that. You're better than that. Okay. Totally. Um, agree. Overarching red flag. And then we'll go to the green flags. Any narcissistic personality disorder trait. If you're being love bomb, get the radar up because you could be dealing with somebody with an agenda. And unfortunately, there's a lot of predatory people out there, both sexes. Uh, I've seen it. And have your wits about you. Don't get sucked in. Even if you haven't been in a great relationship or for many years, you don't want to let your guard down in a way that could entangle or enmesh you. Uh, they'll, they'll take your money. They'll take your time. They'll make you feel guilty. Look out, man. That is a, just a huge overarching red flag. Yeah. So. Well, and like you said, the love bombing, if somebody just comes on so strong, be, be questionable of that. Yeah. And we've done other videos on that. I agree. The narcissistic and especially covert narcissists. And I know how you feel about that is very, very, very important point. Well, Jonathan, we're coming to the end of the segment and let's, let's end on a positive note. <laughs> Everybody is forewarned. What, you know, how, how do we recognize that somebody is worthy to pursue? Right. I'm going to call this my green flags playlist. All right. Because everyone talks red flags. We're going to talk green flags. One of my most important personality characteristics is playfulness. Right. So I really love playful women. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my
and women who know how to have fun and bring levity to the situation. I, right? I love your girlfriend. So somehow I just play music and they appear magically from out of the sky. Uh, right. So this is a green flag. They are upfront with who they are. They share their full name, their social media footprint, if you will. I've had, I don't use Facebook, but I do have a Facebook account, uh, but I haven't logged on in a very long time. Uh, and I don't have many friends. I don't cultivate that aspect of social media. I do have an Instagram account, JCN Law. But if somebody asks you for your social media footprint, share it with they them. Are. They're curious and they have a right to know. Right. Especially if there's any doubt of your marital status or uh, relationship status. Let them see it. Let them see. Uh, my videos are on Instagram, so they're going to see me, uh, you know, unscripted. They're interested in mu meeting in a mutually convenient uh, place for a short first date. That speaks, actions speak louder than words, Silka. If someone's saying, hey, you know, you live 50 miles from me, let's meet equidistant, first date, I respect you, you respect me, that works. And, and that's a real green flag. It shows interest and effort. Right. Um, somebody uh, with a great sense of self-awareness, kindness, and empathy, all right? So nobody's perfect. And Okay, we all have a past, especially at this point in our lives. Um, listen and empathize and see if they are interested in you and what you have to say, or is it all about them? You know, these are kind of skill sets that you need to develop as you're out there. Yeah. Um, and, and last green flag, if you see someone who's making a sincere effort to be a team player, no matter what it is, we're all busy, we all do, we have interests, uh, but... If you love to uh, do certain things, they're, may, they're interested in being a team player, and you, you could jump on that too. That is a recipe for a good situation. So I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you so much. What, what, what a great conversation and so many great points. Again, through the eyes, through the lens of a divorce attorney, you do, you see people at their worst. And, yeah, you worst. know, I, I'm sure a lot of times you just want to wring their neck and go, how did you not see this coming? <laughs> I say that in almost every case where there's a narcissist involved. So again, I'm going to pound that home. Understand covert narcissism and covert narcissist personality disorder, it absolutely wrecks people uh, for years. And then breaking the trauma bond and getting away from these people is a mess. Educate yourself. Go down the rabbit hole. It's all available for you online. Um, and while, I'm, while I have the floor, if you like this video, like it, comment. We read the comments. Subscribe. We need to get Silka over 100,000 already, right? <laughs> what the heck is going on with you guys? <laughs> Do it, all right? It's free. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you. I just love talking with you. <laughs> you. you you're going to be a regular. <laughs> thank you. I enjoy uh, being here. And, you know, if someone wants to add to our discussions, leave it in the comments. You know, uh, everybody's situation is different, but life could be phenomenal shared with the right person, but it could be a mess with the wrong one. Absolutely. So learn, learn about yourself and become aware and you could really level up beautifully. So. I, I agree. Jonathan, we will link to all of your information uh, to your great YouTube channel. Surprise, surprise. Jonathan is a Thank YouTuber you. too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we, I started a second YouTube channel by popular demand called the Unplugged Divorce Attorney. Oh, cool. And it's going to be even grittier than my other YouTube channel. I get a lot of questions from around the world. Other lawyers write to me. So I decided let's let's start another channel. And so that just got started about a week or so ago. Oh, great. Well, we'll link to that as well. Yeah, I wasn't even aware of that. Jonathan, thank you. And we will see you soon on Second Act TV. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Thanks, Silka. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. Just click on through to YouTube. And when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too and we'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.